We've been raising quail for quite some time, but before we even got our quail, we started off with doing a ton of research on the right methods that we would want to use, the space amount that they would need, as well as the different products that we would need to purchase in order to help create a great life for them. Since then, we've actually gotten our quail and have been raising quail for a couple of years now and throughout that time have learned a lot of knowledge that I am going to try to compile into this video so that you can learn some true must-haves for raising quail, for raising happy and healthy quail, all the way through the incubation stage until their adult life and we're going to break it down all today. But before we even get started with thinking about the incubation stage, you really need to start thinking about the quail eggs. But before getting started with talking about quail, you're going to want to start thinking about how you're going to get them. Most quail are going to be started with eggs. We actually have a few different varieties of quail here at our homestead. We decided to raise Caternic quail and we've been really happy with them. I'd say they're probably the most popular quail type to be raising at a homestead because they will start to lay eggs at a pretty young age, which makes them a very desirable quail breed to raise. There are a few different actual types of quail. You're going to see that there's Italian, Spanish, um, there's blue egg laying quail, and then there's speckled egg laying quail. There's a lot of different types out there. And I don't think you really have to stick to a certain one unless you want to be that breeder. We actually did find our eggs on Etsy. That's where we purchased ours. And what I would do is definitely look for someone that has fertilized eggs, meaning that there is male and female and you're going to be able to hatch out these eggs and always look at the comments on all of them. So whenever we purchase our eggs, we'll comment if it was successful or not, kind of give a rating. And I think a lot of other people do that as well on Etsy, which is what I really like about getting our eggs from there. You can also purchase eggs from eBay or other hatcheries, but we've definitely had a lot of success with Etsy. So I definitely think if you're able to do a little search in Etsy, find someone. They're usually from a local farm and looking to just spread around their wealth, which is what I really like about it instead of going to a specific hatchery. Now, these aren't going to be medicated eggs or given antibiotics or anything like that. So that's something else to think about. And usually quail are going to be sold in the egg form. This is because baby quail are very fragile. Unlike chickens who are just super robust and can handle a lot, baby quail cannot really do the same. They're a lot smaller and fragile. So you're really going to need to start with eggs and you'll actually have to incubate them on your own. I'm Danielle of this Federal Homestead and welcome to our channel. We bring new content twice a week and we're so happy to have you here today. If you wanna go ahead and join our journey by subscribing, that will make sure that this content is brought to your feed and it really helps support our channel. But back to raising quail. Once you've gone ahead and purchased your eggs, there's usually going to be instructions on what to do with them. Usually you're just gonna to want to let them sit and wait at about room temperature, and then you're going to stick them into an incubator. And I definitely would research what temperature and humidity you'll need for your incubator because it's going to be specialized per the different type of breed that you have. So a Bob White Quail is going to use a different set of um, temperature and humidity than say a Caternic quail. So definitely do your research there. But it's really important that you do have a good incubator. Most quail eggs will come with a hatching rate, usually anywhere from 40 to 60%. Anywhere else from that is usually you're having bad eggs if it's much lower or something happened, they took too long that they were shipped or a really high one that's very successful and I would keep getting from that hatchery or wherever you got that from because that's a really great rate. Now, a lot can be due to the incubator that you purchase. And when we went out to buy our incubator, we honestly just looked for convenience and something with automations. I really love our incubator. We use a Nurture Right 360 and it really does have the set it and forget it features. You just plug in the temp, the humidity, 
You'll have to add water throughout the time, so you'll kind of read the humidity levels, but for the most part, it's going to turn the eggs for you multiple times per day, and it's gonna help regulate the temperature, which is really great. We've had it for a couple of years now, we've done a lot of incubations in it, and we've had a really great success rate. So I definitely recommend this incubator, and I think it's truly been a game changer. It's also not too large, it doesn't take up too much room, and I love that it has a nice clear cover on it, so you can see it right in, especially if you have kids, and they can watch the journey happen, and on the hatching day, you hear all the little cheeps, and you get to see what's actually happening, which I think is really cool. But if you can't find this incubator, there are a ton of other incubators, and I don't think it needs to be specifically made for quail. In our incubator, there are a different type of tray that you can set up. We honestly just keep it in the normal chicken egg, set up, we haven't really changed that out, and it's been super successful for us still. But you can get a quail specific one um, if you know you're gonna be hatching out a lot more quails than any other type of bird. But I like the flexibility to be able to hatch out chickens, quail, and any other type of egg laying bird that we might want to hatch out. After a couple of weeks in the incubator, your quail are going to start hatching out of their eggs. And you obviously cannot leave them in the incubator for a long extended amount of time. Usually we'll leave them in there for around 24 hours after the first egg is hatched because they really don't need food and water in that time. But they will start to need something after that. So once they've actually dried off and they're nice and puffy, then you're gonna wanna stick them in a brooder. And a brooder is really just a really safe space for them. It's nice and warm. For our Quaternic Quail, we're usually setting it to around 99 degrees Fahrenheit at the very beginning. And you wanna make sure that your brooder is really set up for them. There are really two ways that you can set up your brooder. You can one, choose to purchase a brooder, and there are a few online. We actually did a review on a hatching time brooder. It definitely wasn't our favorite way because we've really customized our homemade version of a brooder, and that's really the second way that you can brood your babies out. So you are brooding out your quail. There are a few things that you wanna keep in mind. So first off is having the space that they're in. So in our homemade brooder, we have a nice big tub that they're in, and then you also want to have some bedding on the bottom. This is something that you can use any type of shavings for, or old newspaper shredded up, anything like that that they can go to the bathroom on, you can clean out. We actually will do kind of a deep layer method here. So we'll just kind of layer layers of shavings on top each week or whenever we see that it's really dirty, we'll lay it on top and then they'll have a nice clean layer on top of there. At the beginning, they're gonna be really small. And you really don't need a thick, thick layer, but just something on the bottom so that if they do go to the bathroom, they're not going to get wet or kind of get the, it on them. After that, you're gonna think about having a lid so they really can't get out. Quail are known to pop, which means that they're definitely able to take flight and jump out of there, so definitely have a covering on there. And this is something you can just use some chicken wire and kind of build it out to whatever you want. And on top of that, you will need a heat lamp or a heat bulb that is going to be on there. Now, we use the same ones that we use for when we have our chicks in a brooder. So this is gonna be pretty similar to a chick brooder. And we actually plug it into something called an ink bird. And what's really great about this is it will help regulate the temperature because the quail will know to, you don't wanna put them in too big of a space that they'll like wander to the cold side or stay in the hot side for too long. What's really nice is the inky bird ink bird will regulate the temperature. So it'll turn on and off if it gets too hot or too cold, it'll turn back on. And that way it kind of creates the perfect temperature instead of just leaving that light on and kind of guessing or having a thermometer that you're kind of changing everything for you. Again, any automations that you can do is key to really the longevity and success of hatching and growing out quail. If you really wanna do this, something long-term, you're gonna to want to have automations to help make this easier for you. Once your quail are actually in their brooder, they will need to have food and water. 
Now, they definitely are really small at the beginning, so I would just use the top of like a peanut butter jar or anything that's just a small, tiny lip, fill it with a little bit of water in there for them. And as they grow, you'll want to graduate to a larger and larger size, so you don't have to be filling this every couple of minutes. So I'll link down kind of what we use for our watering and feed, and the feed, feed is the same system. So you'll wanna start off with a small, lid and then grow up into a true feeder for them and that's when you're also going to need to think about your feed for them and you can actually use a wild game bird food as well as baby chick feed and just make sure that it's ground up really really tiny for them because they are so small that they won't be able to eat it if it's any bigger. After about a couple weeks your quail will be able to graduate into a more adult setting. Again, there are really two ways to do this. You can either build your own quail system or you can purchase it. And I'll throw up some really great builds that I've seen and this is definitely something that you can do. Although we, again, love having automations. So we did decide to purchase a hatching time quail cage and it has been a game changer. It has a lot of great features. So it includes an egg drop system where the eggs will just drop out. You're able to have like a feeding trough for them with little pieces in it so that the food doesn't go everywhere. There's a nice automated watering system so you're not wasting too much water there. And it's a nice area. If you don't have too many quails in it, they do have enough room to really roam around. And you can do your own updates and configurations to the change to the cage to really update it. But when you think about a cage, you really want to think about one, safety. So where are you going to put this that you know your quail will be safe in? So we have ours set inside of our barn. If you have any type of shed or garage, you can also keep them outside, but just make sure that it is lifted up from the ground so that little critters can't go in there and steal up all your quail. Quail are gonna be pretty hardy that they will be able to stand colder temperatures. So in the winter, you don't really have to worry about anything here, but something to keep in mind is similar to chickens, quail will stop laying eggs when the light is reduced and the heat is reduced. So when it does get a lot darker out, if you aren't providing some supplemental lighting and heat, they probably will stop laying eggs. Something to think about there, I like to give our quail a little bit of a break or we'll harvest some of our quail going into the winter, keep a few of the layers so we can repopulate when the spring comes in. Um, but it's really up to you what you want to do there. And the next thing is just thinking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. They need food and they need water. So how are you going to provide feed and water for them, whether it's in the heat of the summer all the way through the cold in the winter, making sure that you're replenishing so that things aren't freezing over and they're not able to get to their water and then you're providing enough feed for them. They'll definitely start to graduate up in their feed. We still do give them a crumble because they're still pretty small animals in general. They're baby, baby chickens, but um, at that time, we'll graduate them up into an uh, adult laying type of crumble. So whether that's a game bird crumble or we also just will do a chicken layer crumble at that time. Really up to you, but I definitely do suggest kind of going into a layer feed once they are adults, once they start to lay their eggs. And that way you'll just get a harder shell. Honestly, quail eggs are a pretty hard shell to begin with, so not something you really have to worry about, but something to think about there. We've been raising quail for a couple of years now, and there isn't too many things that you do need, but these are really the must-haves and basics for a successful quail raising system. I hope that you found these helpful. I'll include links of everything down below. And again, if you like this type of content, please subscribe and like as it really helps our channel. And I'll add some more videos on other quail topics right here. And we'll see you guys again next time. Bye.